Hey guys, it's Carrie, and I am back with a chat video, so I hope you guys are ready for a good rambly video, because that's probably what this is going to be. I've got Chanel in my lap right here. Hey, look at the camera so people can see. She likes to do this, and so we can all see up her nose, but anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. I meant to film this video last week, and I just didn't do it, so... I am a bit behind in my monthly check-ins, and um, as I say that, I knew I was going to forget to bring something. Um, at the end of February, I want to say I was down a total of over 13 pounds. I had it exactly written down. I didn't have, I don't have it in here with me right now, my notebook, and I just don't want to stop the video. So, um, I will tell you, I have been bad this uh, first full week of March. I've got to tell you guys, I got sweet cravings like I haven't had those in a long time, and I'm like, I've got to have something. And that something turned into another week of sweets. So, I you know what, I don't want to live with regrets about that because it's, I did it. Um, I know I can feel um, that I've gained a little bit of weight. Not a lot, I can feel it. But um, today is Saturday, so um, Saturday, the, March the 9th. So I feel like I'm literally experiencing deja vu of the 1st of February again when I did the same exact same thing. So I'm um, starting um, March the 10th. Um, I'll probably put this video up on Monday just because that seems to be my normal pattern as of late. Um, so it's a couple days before you guys will see it. So I'm going to be back on the no sweet kick again until my dad's birthday. I'm committing to it this time. And um, his birthday is in early April. So it'll be almost a month um, without sweet. So that's what I'm going to do. And that seems to be my pattern um, for this year going into the third month of the year. But you know what? I'm feeling great. Um, I don't want to say that I kind of feel a little guilty because I do, but you know what? I'm putting a period and I'm moving on and I'm enjoying life. So, you know, this is my life as it is now with the uh, different change in eating with lifestyle. So I do honestly feel so much better when I'm not eating sweets, but then those cravings came and um, instead of just giving in to them one time, it just, it's kind of like the snowball effect. And I usually spend about well, the first time it was like nine days. This time it will probably be um, nine days. <laughs> so um, it's literally a repeat of the first of February. So anyway, it is what it is. So, um, um, so but other than that, I'm doing great. Uh, Coco and Chanel are doing great. I brought a few things with me. Oh, let me. Um, well, let me show you this since I just picked it up. I went to the dermatologist and um, I had a great uh, checkup. And I told her I wanted to start using retinols. And she asked her, because I've got some that are over the counter that I bought from Sephora, Cult Beauty. And I had ordered one from Cult Beauty before I went there, but it hadn't come in yet. So I have not had a chance to use it. It's a new Sunday Riley one. But she told me that um, prescription is the best if you're going to use retinol. And she said this Retin-A Micro, um, it's 0 .08 uh, gel microsphere. I don't know what any of that means, but she's like, this is the best. She says, I use it myself. And I've got to tell you, I don't know specifically how or the exact age my doctor is, but she had her degrees up on the wall. So, um, you know, guesstimation would put her in her early 50s. And let me tell you, she does not look a day over like 34, 35, maybe even 33. She, her skin is fantastic. And she says, this is what I use myself. And she said, I don't even recommend the generic prescription brand. Um, now she told me that to get this locally, um, I think, Think I may have misunderstood her, but I think she says it's it can potentially cost seven hundred to eight hundred dollars, and I went whoa. But there is a pharmacy in 
I think she said it was Arlington, Texas, that will take a prescription from the doctor and then they will mail it to you. And she said, you'll probably have to pay like $75. And I'm like, I'll do that. I only had to pay $10. And that name of that pharmacy is Geeson's or Gleason, Geeson's, I think, like G-E-E-S-O-N something. But if you're curious about that pharmacy, I don't know a lot about it, but talk to your doctor about it. I don't know if all prescriptions are cheap or just the Retin-A, but I've only been using it about a week, week and a half. And so far, I haven't noticed a big change. There have been a few dry patches because I know that retinols will make you peel for at first. So I don't use it every night, but I've noticed a little bit of dry skin, nothing major. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. Somebody said, I was watching a video and they said you can't show prescription medications on YouTube. And I'm like, I've never heard that in my life. But considering that you didn't actually see the prescription or who it was prescribed to, I don't know. Anyway, I, if I messed up, I apologize. But um, hopefully I just didn't make a mistake there. But I've never heard that in my life. And I'm like, I think I've seen videos where prescription medications get shown a lot. So anyway, um, as far as goals for the month of March, I, again, I will go back to No Sweets starting March the 10th until my dad's birthday, and that gives me right about a month. I do good for about a month-ish, <laughs> and then it's like, oh my goodness, I need them. I really don't need them at all, but I want them. And um, so I'm gonna go back to that. I haven't set um, any major goals. I'm sorry, guys, my nose literally, why does this happen? I just started sitting, just sit down and start talking, and then it really starts itching. Um, but as far as like personal goals, um, and I'm fidgeting with a shirt. I feel like it's been a long time since I, film, I filmed and now I'm fidgeting a lot. I, um, I want to really, really work on my photography skills and videography skills, and especially photography. I've gotten really into photography and I brought my other camera. So I've got a few different digital cameras. The one I film on is the Canon EOS 80D. And I get tickled when I say that because it sounds like I'm saying ADD, but it's 880 and then the letter D in case you couldn't understand me the first time. Sometimes I've got a bit of an accent. Great, this just pulled off a piece of hair. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Uh. Um, but I also have this Nikon camera, the D7500, and it films in 4K. And if you watched my video a few weeks ago when I told about what happened to my mom, by the way, she is doing well. Um, and if you're new to my channel and didn't watch that, she had a heart attack on January the 20th. And so I filmed a video. I was filming on the Canon 80D, and then the battery died. And by the way, I've charged up this morning. It's fully charged, so we don't have to worry about that. So I switched over to this one, and this camera um, actually will film in 4K. The this one will not, but I haven't. Yet, I have yet to film in 4K because I've just been learning this camera. I love. Oh, sorry about that. I love the Nikon brand, but um, I really, really love it. But I also love the Canon brand. So it's kind of like some people say, if you prefer a certain particular brand of car, somebody else, let's say Chevys and Ford. Somebody really may love Ford. Somebody really may love Chevys. It's kind of that um, between the two of them. It's just personal preference. But for photography, I've always loved Nikon better than. Sorry about Coco better than Canon, but when I got the Canon 80D, I fell in love with the photography on it, the video on it, and so now I'm kind of a convert. Oh, Coco, people are trying to listen to mommy. <laughs> I can't even see what she's barking at. Chanel is just not even paying attention. Um, but I really, this is a, a fantastic camera. The when I, I was originally trying to get um, decide what did I want to buy when I was upgrading cameras, 
it was the um, I was going back and forth between this one and the one I'm filming on now and what pushed me over the edge to the Canon 80D was this flip out screen the one on the Canon flips out to the side and sometimes you might see me like I'm looking at it right now instead of looking at you guys and that's a bad habit a lot of youtubers get into because they check the viewfinder and then also some people have this external monitor that they will be off to the side that either you don't have a flip out screen or you can't see the flip out screen very well you will see people like looking down like this at a monitor um, so they're just checking to see if they're in focus well anyway back to this one this has a oh let me show it so you can you guys can see it. it has a screen but this is all it does it won't go up any further i'm like what I don't understand what is the purpose of this and really the only um, and the thing about it is the one here will flip over where the back of it is um, just plastic and you won't scratch your screen so if you're traveling with it you don't have to worry about scratching that touch screen this one doesn't have that and I'm like what is the purpose of this and the only thing I have actually used for it I've got a mini tripod that I used my vlogging camera on and I took this camera to Radnor Lake last weekend and I set it down on the mini tripod I was trying to get a shot over the lake it didn't work out what I wanted but I was just practicing with this camera and as it was down on the mini tripod and I was kind of just lower I did pull the screen up and so I could see it better because I wasn't down at eye level and so it was useful for that situation but to actually film on it um, when, back to that video I was talking about when I switched cameras this particular camera was focusing on this is a um, it was it was classified as a bonsai tree when I bought it and I've had it almost 20 years so um, I'm not really sure what it is uh, but it focused on this tree behind me and not on me and so that's why the camera went out of focus on me and has a great focus system but and it's pretty good at tracking but when I set it up I wasn't in the best frame of mind at that point and I was in a hurry so anyway but I have been practicing with this camera I'm also um, looking at getting one of those external monitors to hook up to it so I can actually see myself that I'm in focus but I would like to film some 4k videos on this one for the YouTube channel but I'm gonna have to practice and the practice videos is not gonna be something that you guys will see it'll be just like hey I'll put it on there talk to myself and go put the SD card in the camera so I say all of that to tell you that I'm practicing my photography and videography um, when I went out to Radnor Lake to practice with that I got a few good shots but let me tell you guys it has been the rainiest winter that I have ever remembered in my life and February um, was the rainiest February on record at least for Nashville if not for the entire state of Tennessee and I'm almost positive the meteorologist said that it, it was the second rainiest month on record and I think they said June 2010 was our rainiest month and that was when the city of Nashville flooded so um, I, when I went out the skies were so gray there was literally no color in the sky it was um, and it had rained the day before I don't think it rained Saturday but the Sun wasn't out um, so I did overcompensate I think when I did when I used Lightroom but I love to oversaturate my photos that's just personal preference I realize some people hate that but I'm still learning Lightroom um, so I will add a couple of those photos I, um, I think I can add them to yeah I will add them to this uh, video I think I still I don't think I deleted them because sometimes I just delete the photos after I'm done with them I'll post them either on Facebook or Instagram and then I just get them off my computer I do have an external hard drive that I need to put all the stuff on there um, I did tell you this video was gonna be rambly um, but I also got this book so for March in addition to practicing my photography skills I want to have some adventures so I've got this book hiking waterfalls in Tennessee and for those of you who don't know Tennessee has a lot of waterfalls now this one I believe I'm looking to see if it says where it is I want to say this could be Burgess Falls 
don't quote me on that. Um, it's probably in the book somewhere. But the book is broken down into waterfalls like in Middle Tennessee. I was going to see. Which is, I'm in Middle, yeah. Um, Waterfall Hikes of Middle Tennessee, which is my area. And so it's got Jackson Falls. I've actually been there. That's about an hour or so outside of Nashville. It's fairly easy. Um, you need to be able to... Um, like be able to go upstairs but i believe from what i remember the whole walkway was paved if you park in the right location and it's about a half an hour down to the falls and i believe it was all paved and just steps so it was easy to get into you can get in the water if you want to and so i've been to that one it is off the natchez trace and so there's more so um, and then there's like Cumber the Cumberland Plateau is got a lot of waterfalls. Yeah, this is Burgess Falls. I was right. And it's been a while since I've been there. And the last time I went towards that area, something happened to, I want to say the walkway and they had to close um, the main fall down um, so people couldn't see it. But it's got like a series of waterfalls before you get there. But anyway, I got this book because I thought... Um, Maybe, depending on the weather, um, maybe next weekend I might go to a waterfall and do a vlog. Um, I'm not sure if I want to vlog using um, this camera. I did film a little bit of footage that I put on Facebook then I just deleted it. I was just practicing with it. Um, so I didn't do a, really a vlog at all last week. But um, Another thing I'm going to be uh, working on is my YouTube channel. I still love YouTube. I don't do as much as I used to just because I do not have the time in my in real life outside of YouTube. I'm extremely busy. I don't know um, when that's going to ease up. It, I, I know after September it should, but there's a possibility that it may not. Um, I won't know until around September, October, if that's going to ease up or not. Um, so I just don't have a lot of time to spend as much as I wanted to on it because um, YouTube doesn't support me. I make a teeny tiny bit of money, just if you're curious. Um, last year, I made like $600 off of YouTube. And I'm, I kid you not, that is it. Some people are making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. I made 600 So I've spent way more on YouTube um, doing it than I've actually earned from it. So um, it's just a hobby for me, and I just can't put as much time in it as I would like to. But... Um, it is what it is, but I do want to do some interesting videos for you guys, work on um, my channel, and I'm thinking of subscribing to Epidemic Sound to get some more um, music to add to some cooking videos and uh, some vlogs that I really want to do some vlogs this year. And get, I love nature and I want to get some nature things to show you. And I, I love going out to Radnor Lake. It is so easy to get to from where I live. And um, you do have to get there early because the parking situation is ridiculous. They're, I think they are supposed to build some more parking, but if you don't get there early, you won't get parking. So, um, anyway, so that is kind of my plan for March or my goals for March is work on video and um, photography skills, have some adventures, see some waterfalls, and you know, work on creating some better videos for you guys. I don't know when those videos, when you will start seeing the um, fruits of my labor, of my learning, <laughs> um, studying labor, but hopefully your um, you guys will see hopefully better quality videos if I can get that external monitor and maybe I can film in 4k uh, we will we shall see how that goes I am learning a lot um, you know it's easy just to put the camera on auto and hit the record button and just start talking especially with this camera it's super easy to do that but it's not creative and I do want to work on the creativity um, let's see, I'm looking over here. I've got my Louis Vuitton Star Trail boots. I'm going to change my shirt and film a review video next for you guys. That way it's not boring for you so you can see a different shirt even though you know I'm just doing it back to back. What else did I want to talk about? Um, looking around, oh, 
one other thing, since we're talking a little bit of tech equipment, this is a little remote control I use with this camera to take my photos for the thumbnail. Some people just don't take a separate photo. They just grab a still shot um, and then just get the photo from the video. And I've done that a couple times, but I don't like risking it because you kind of have to be really still for a few seconds and I forget to do that. So it's just easier for me. So I use that little remote. I would like to get the remote for the Nikon and speaking of all of that, um, I have been watching a, <clears throat> a lot of, or not a lot, I've started watching several different photography channels. So I am learning using that. And I, um, or maybe I should say photography slash tech channels. And I am learning that a lot of um, people who do vlogging are using Sony cameras because they said, the quality is better, the autofocus is better, um, but one thing I'm hearing most of them saying is the Sony cameras have the same issue with the flip out screen that this camera does. That's all it does, is that. And then there's another Sony camera that people are vlogging on now. I don't know how old it is, and I don't know a lot about these cameras, so I can't even tell you. I know there's like an AR7 Mark something, um, or something, 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 but there's another one that does have the flip-up screen like the Canon G7X. It comes over the top, but a lot of professional vloggers like to put a microphone on it, on the hot shoe, and the microphone blocks the flip-up lens because it doesn't flip out to the side. So the biggest complaint I've seen about those Sony cameras is the screen. But then people say, well, the autofocus is so good that you're almost always in focus. So I don't know. Um, I'm, I don't know what I'll upgrade to because my vlogging camera went in the water with my first Canon 80D and I can't, I can still take photos. It will do some videos, but the quality just is terrible. There ended up being a huge spot or it looks like fog in the mid, just right dab in the middle of the camera. And um, I'm hesitant to even use it for um, eBay photos. That reminded me of something else. I do need to go get something to show you. I told you it was gonna be a long Remley video. Um, I ended up buying something I wanted to show you because I'm gonna end up putting it on eBay because um, it just didn't fit. I think it was final sale and I wanted to show you that. But just to, you know, a little bit of tech talk right here. I am thinking over the course of this year, before I take my big trip next year, I wanna upgrade a vlogging camera. I was just going to go get the um, G7, Canon G7X Mark II again. I've heard a rumor that they're going to come out with a Mark III this year. So immediately I was going to go get that as soon as it comes out. Well, not, maybe not as soon as it comes out because I'm not all about spending money. I love tech, but I'd rather spend money on fashion than tech. But I'm starting to get into it. So, um, but now I'm thinking about getting that Sony one with the flip up screen because people said it's so better. And I will be honest with you, I don't use an external mic, but I might end up getting one specifically for this camera because again, I'm wanting to do better quality videos for you guys. I, when I film, I am probably a foot away from this camera so I don't think the audio is really that bad but when you're vlogging the audio can just be all over the place so I'm trying to do better for you guys and for myself because I want to put out if I'm putting something out in the world I want it to be good quality video because I'm not gonna watch something that's terrible and you know I want to put out something that you guys want to watch and um, again it might be a cooking video it might be a sit-down chat like this one it might be some fashion videos it might be a nature video because I love nature I don't you know you guys may not realize this but my favorite thing to do is to be out in nature even though I'm allergic to nature and just walking around it's so peaceful so calming I would much rather be doing that than actually um, probably going to the mall as much as I love fashion I love doing that because it just makes me feel so good so on that note, I'm gonna go get the skirt that I bought and show you guys. 
I'm back and I picked up a few more things. I went and got the skirt, a couple of other skirts. I thought we'll just do a mini haul and then I brought some more tech stuff out. So this is the tiny or mini tripod. This is the Manfrotto, I think is how you say it. So this is what I used to vlog on. I do want to get a gimbal for my camera. So there's so much tech stuff that I do want to get. I won't be getting it all at once because of the price. Oh, I was like, what was that? I just heard something Chanel was scratching. I had to put her down. Um, that scared me. <laughs> um, but I use this, but I want, you know, again, I want to do a lot more, but I'm trying to still save money and um, I can't get everything all at once. And I'm also interested in getting a drone, um, probably one of the Mavic drones because they're tiny. Um, I know people really like those phantom drones, but they're so huge, and if you want to take them anywhere, you almost have to have a rolling suitcase. They're so big. So I'm um, looking at the Mavic drones, and I've talked to somebody that is a drone expert. I didn't even realize, I knew this guy for a few years, but I didn't realize he was into drones, and then somebody's like, why don't you talk to him about drones? And so I did, and he's really saying, probably get one of the Mavic drones. And so I'm looking at those. Those um, are all, prices are kind of anywhere from like seven something to almost 2000. I don't think my first drone needs to be a two grand drone at all. But again, I'm still trying to save money. So that's not why I'm going to get in things. I also have this little camera, this Olympus Pen 8. And I basically, it was almost like a peer, a YouTube peer pressure to get this camera. So I got it for Christmas a couple of years ago. And um, a lot of YouTube uh, YouTubers would vlog on this. But two of the people I specifically remember, actually three people. One was Lydia Millen, uh, Josie, I never can remember Josie's last name, but Fashion Mumbler. She was vlogging on it. And then Victoria from In The Fro was vlogging on it. And I even remember a video where that was sponsored that Lydia Millen did and um, it was sponsored by like Olympus Pen and she was she was saying you know I'm using this camera then I realized right after that anytime you would see her vlogging and she would vlog where she had a mirror she was always using the Canon G7X Mark II and I'm like you really don't use that do you and then I noticed all of the other vloggers are watch um, I think, I mean, I don't want to be accusing anybody of anything, but I think Olympus might have been paying people. <laughs> and I really don't have a lot of negative things to say about this camera, but um, I've got one negative thing I do not like, and that is the flip out screen. I thought originally that was so cool that it comes down here, but if you want to put it on the tripod, you can't do it with the with this screen. So it's the flip out screen is a terrible location. It should come up um, like this, but that's as far as it goes up. You can still do it like that, but you can't see yourself. Um, so that's the only reason you can see yourself. So um, I really just never got on with this camera that much, and I was getting ready to put it on eBay and sell it, and. Um, that's when I realized that my Canon G7X was not going to be usable for quality videos anymore. So I decided to go ahead and keep this and maybe do some vlogging on it. I haven't done it yet, but I think whenever I get another smaller camera, whatever it may be, this one I'm definitely going to sell. So um, it was not a bad camera. The photos were decent, but I just haven't fallen in love with it at all. And I, I don't really, other than the flip out screen, I don't have anything negative to say about this camera. I love the aesthetic of the body of it. And I think it was, it's a great, like if you want to include this camera in an Instagram photo, I think a lot of people loved the aesthetic of it because it is just a beautiful camera. And I know it came out also like in a brown color, but, um, you know, I don't want to keep anything that I'm just not going to use, but I may, you know, who knows, maybe I just didn't get a, give it a good chance. And so, um, you may see some of the waterfall fall vlogs on this one, but I'm definitely going to be taking the Nikon with me. Um, okay. Back to the fashion. I brought a couple of other items to show you as well. This is just going to be a mini fashion haul. Um, so I saw, speaking of Josie fashion mumbler, I saw this skirt on her channel. It's from French Connection. And um, she was going to, um, 
I think it may have been London Fashion Week, and she had this skirt. I fell in love with it when I saw it on her channel, and so I ordered it, and it was on sale, and um, then I got like an extra percentage off, so I, I ended up with shipping or something, I ended up paying $88 for it. I'm just telling you guys right now. It was originally priced at $258. And so they didn't have many sizes available. So I got a size US 10. It's a UK 14 or a large in Euro. And um, in like J Crew stuff, depending on how it's made, I or Kate Spade, I can, I was, I was wearing like an eight, a 10, no, a 10 or a 12 um, last year and then I thought I was still a 10 but I had lost some weight this year so I ordered it and then when it came in now it's not in danger of falling off of me but it does not look good it is honestly too big for me and so I measured the waistline, and I probably should have told you guys what the measurements were, but I wanna say this was 17 inches across. When I put this on eBay, um, I will definitely include uh, what the uh, length of the waistband just across the front, but I wanna say it was 17 inches, which would make it approximately 34 inches all the way around. I It's too big for me. It was about five inches too big, and so, it just looked terrible and so I'm gonna end up selling this because I think it was final sale all I've done was try it on it's new with the tag I don't know if anybody out there is interested I'm not going to mark it up too much because I just told you what I paid for it I would like to get at least the $88 back um, the full amount so I will mark it up based on um, what I have to pay eBay and PayPal. So buy a few dollars, um, and it'll probably, I'll probably, I'm gonna say, maybe right at 100, and we'll see. That way I can make my money back after I pay my eBay fees. I'm just telling you, being honest, what my plan is. I may end up dropping the price. Um, I don't even know if French Connection still has any more, so if you're interested, I would definitely recommend you go look at French Connection's website if you are interested in that skirt. Um, they just didn't have very many sizes other than extremely small and extremely large sizes, but um, there's that. I got a couple of J. Crew pieces to show you, so I think as far as fashion items go this year, I bought three skirts and then the Louis Vuitton Star Trail boots, and um, normally I would have bought those in one weekend, not the boots, but the skirts, I would have done that in a weekend. So I have done a lot better with my shopping. I am extremely proud of myself. Um, the boots I justify because they've been on my wish list. Uh, it'll be two years in July. I saved up my money and I got them and I don't have any regrets. Um, but I do, I will explain more in that video. Um, oh, so I saw this skirt and I saw it on J. Crew's website. I don't know if this is the front or the back and I don't guess it really matters. Oh, you know what? It actually zips up in the back. So this is the back of it. I just put it on the hanger incorrectly. I saw this on J. Crew's website and it was either full price or just a little bit off. It was like 17% um, discounted. And I decided not to get it. And then my friend, Melissa, um, some of you may know her. Um, she's like skirted fancy on um, Instagram. She's got a beautiful collection of modest denim skirts. I highly recommend you guys go check out her website. But Melissa Zimmerman, she's the sweetest lady. She put this skirt on Instagram and she mentioned, you know, now it's on sale, but she wanted the mater she wanted it in a maternity version. And I was like, you know what? I want to go look at that skirt again. Let me tell you guys, it was on sale and then J. Crew had an extra 50% off of all sale items. And then there was something else I didn't even know I had. I had $30 in like rewards money. This skirt I basically got for $18 and it was well over a hundred to begin with. So I didn't mind paying $18 for this beautiful leopard print skirt. I wore it for the first time on Friday with my Star Trail boots and I was pleased with the way it was looking. So I need to do an outfit. I may end up wearing that to church on Sunday. So you might, <laughs> the same outfit that I wore on Friday. Um, so you may end up seeing an outfit of the day. Um, 
um, coming up in the next couple weeks. Then I also got, the, oh, I got that in a size 10. It's slightly big, but not enough that I need to worry about it. Again, they had very limited sizes. And so I just got the 10 and I was like, I'll make that work for $17. Then I saw this skirt and it was 40% off or 30% off. And they, J. Crew has been doing this same skirt in different prints and patterns. And I loved the color for spring. I realized I should have said no for a couple reasons. I'm saving money or attempting to. And I'm also attempting to lose weight. So I don't want to spend money on clothing now and then lose weight and then not, it'll be too big later, which that's a good thing to have. But I, um, um, you know, I also don't want to buy clothing for what I think my size is going to be because that's ridiculous. So I'm trying not to allow myself to buy any spring clothing, but I saw the skirt. I thought it was gorgeous color for spring. And I actually have it in a print that I got um, back in the fall. And I got that in a size eight. And it's a little snug, even still snug. So I thought, you know what, the 10 will be fine. I got this in a 10 and it's almost too big now. So I don't, I can take this back. So I'm on the fence about returning this one back to J. Crew and just getting my money back. I don't know, um, or getting it in um, the size eight. I'm just between right now, currently, I'm between like an eight and a 10 in J. Crew. Um, with some of their stuff, at least in this skirt. And in French Connection, that size 10, I would have said, honestly, that was easily what I would think a size 12 or a 14 would be. So, you know, you can't go by sizes. So anyway, I um, just thought I would show you the mini haul of what I've gotten this year. Let me go get Coco. This video is probably going to be close to 40 minutes long. I apologize. I will try to edit out what I can. Um, it may be 30 minutes long, but let me get Coco. I'll end the video and then I'm going to film my review. Since you guys already saw Chanel at the front of the video, I thought we would just do Coco right here. Let me let mommy fix your ear. Um, anyway, she is doing good. Everybody is okay. You're digging your foot into my, I'm wearing my Gucci shirt right now. And it's like, it's not something you want your dog to dig their foot in, you know? <laughs> um, anywho, um, she is doing okay. I'm trying to think if anything is going on with them. I think everything has been good, haven't you? They have torn holes in some of my socks. Not happy about that. I'm really, really, really good about never putting my clothing on the floor. I always hang it up, but sometimes I take socks off and instead of putting them in the hamper, I put them on the floor. That's a terrible habit. And then Coco is a sock thief. And she and Chanel play tug of war with them. And so I had a favorite pair of Kate Spade um, socks and they have holes in them now. But anyway, other than that, she's been doing really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you to all my original subscribers. If you're still here with me, everybody that has subscribed over the years, I recently hit 6,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That means the world to me. I really appreciate it, especially when I, over the past year or so, I haven't put as much in it. And an, as much of an effort into it as I should have for something that I really love doing. Um, I'm hoping to again to change that this year. Thank you guys for watching. I would love to know how you guys are doing. Leave me a comment below. I love chatting with you guys. Even though I am bad about responding quickly, I apologize for that as well. It's just, again, I am so busy, but I'm going to try to do so much better this year. Um, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye, everybody.